Hello, this is a guide on how to use your Intec ColorCut CC500, how to create your cut files and how to do your graphic file design. First, you can do this with any version of Illustrator or CorelDRAW. In this example, we'll be using Illustrator from Adobe. Go to File and New to create your document. Give your document a name. In our case, we'll create a document that's 450 by 320, which is SRA3 size. Ensure that your document is CMYK. You can double check that by clicking on this down arrow and checking the color mode. Here is our document. Intec color cut files require two smart marks. As you can see on this sheet, a smart mark at the lead edge and a smart mark at the tail edge. The lead edge smart mark is used by this high resolution camera in order to identify the origin or the start point to read the file. The smart mark at the end of the page will identify if there's been any skew or feed errors on your print and will adjust your cut line accordingly. So we now need to create those smart marks on your page. Smart marks do not have a stroke. So select the stroke and make sure it's set to none. Smart marks are 100% black and black only. So double click on the actual fill color and make sure that cyan yellow and magenta are set to zero and black is set to 100%. Each smart mark is a four millimeter by four millimeter square. Click on Adobe's rectangle tool and simply click anywhere on your page. It enables you to key in easily the size of your smart mark, four millimeters by four millimeters, and click OK. Now we need to position your smart mark. This can be easily done by using Adobe's transform tool. We want the smart mark to be positioned at the bottom of the sheet. Most digital devices have a five millimeter non-printable area. The camera will also be looking for the edge of the paper, so we cannot position it right on the edge of the sheet for either of those reasons. It's ideally suited between 6 to 10 millimeters from the bottom of the sheet. The closer to the bottom of the sheet I get, the wider the cutting area. The minimum distance should be 6 millimeters, so in this case I'm going to use the minimum distance. To easily position it within 6 millimeters of the bottom of the sheet, we can key in the height of the sheet which is 320 millimeters minus six. We also want the smart mark to be within 50 millimeters of the top of the sheet. Again, using the transform tool, we can simply key in 50 millimeters. This smart mark now is in the right position and now we need to add the second mark. Again, click on the Adobe Illustrator's rectangle tool and click anywhere on the document. Four millimeter by four millimeter measurements you entered earlier will automatically come up and click on OK. Use the transform tool again to select again the distance from the bottom of the sheet as being 320 minus 6. So you can see both of those marks are in a line. But now we want this mark to be 20 millimeters from the tail edge of the sheet as we saw in the example earlier. So key in the length of your sheet at 450 millimeters minus the 20, which is the distance that we want for the margin. The smart marks have now easily and quickly been put in the right place. To make your graphic file design easier, you can save this as a layer. We're now ready to start adding our artwork. To make life easier, we'll add a new layer for the artwork. We'll give this a name to make it easy to work out where we're putting the work. Position your artwork onto the layer. Note that your artwork cannot go too close to your smart marks. If we zoom in to see what's happening. The Intec CCD Vision Registration System has a tolerance of 5 millimeters, so 
So when it looks and scans for your smart mark, it will scan five millimeters either side of where it thinks it should be. In this case, because we've positioned the artwork too close, we will get a timeout error with the marker not being recognized because it cannot identify the mark or the side of our artwork. Ensure that any artwork is positioned away from the smart mark by a minimum of six millimeters. In addition, be aware that the paper or the media or your label substrate is held by the pinch wheels in the cutter. The pinch wheels are 25 millimeters from the lead edge of your sheet. So after it has read your smart mark, it will reverse the sheet up to the first cut line. If your first cut line is beyond 25 millimeters, then it will reverse the sheet out of your cutter. This red area here shows the area we're not to position artwork in. And as you can see, our artwork is too close to the top of the sheet. So there is an unprintable area of 25 millimeters at the lead edge of our sheet. And because we don't want artwork to conflict with the smart marks, there is an unprintable area of 15 to 16 millimeters at the bottom of the sheet. The tail edge of the sheet is 10 millimeters, and the top area here is also 10 millimeters. To give you an idea, the red area represents the non-printable area. So that's 10 millimeters at the top, 10 millimeters at the bottom, 15 to 16 millimeters in this area, because you have the margin for your non-printable area, the actual smart mark itself, and the tolerance of the camera and the area at the top of the sheet where your pinch wheels cannot reverse your media back. As I said, if media is, or images are in this area, then there is a risk your cutter will reverse and it will slip on the paper because it will not be gripping it properly. And when it starts to feed it back the other way, your paper will no longer be straight for your cutting. Position your jobs inside your printable area and your cutting area. There we have it. If we print this job as we see it here, then we will print our cut lines, which is undesirable. So create a new layer again for your cut lines. Select the cut line on the file. A little indicator will indicate the level or the layer that your cut line is on or the element that has been selected is on. Click on the button and drag it onto your cutting line layer. Select your next cut line. And in fact, we can hold down the shift key so we can select multiple cut lines and move the little red dot onto the cutting mask layer. We can see the progress by clicking the eye tool. If we hide the artwork by clicking on the eye, we can see a row of five cut lines here. And you'll note there's no cut lines yet down here. If we review the artwork and hide the cutting mask, you'll notice that the squares on each of those have disappeared. So we'll do the last items. and we will move those onto the cutting mask. Now when we hide the artwork, we can see there is a cutting line for each item. And if we hide the cutting mask, we can see there are no cut lines on the actual artwork. Just going back to the cutting mask for a minute, the cut lines must be 100% black. In our case, as we moved them over from the customer's job, they were Cyan, double click on your stroke and change the cut lines to 100% black. Now our artwork is complete. We can save our file 
and we can save it as an artwork file. So we have all our layers complete. For printing, you will want to hide the cutting mask, particularly if your jobs have a white background. And you may wish to save that file as a PDF for printing. However, for cutting, we do not want to have the artwork on the layer, as it could be that the artwork contains lines, like the barcode that's here, or the lines in this nutritional label here. These would be confused by the cutter, and it would expect to cut those too. So, show your cutting mask, and delete your artwork layer. Now save this file, specifically, as a cut file. And you can save it in Illustrator format. Please note, you must save it in Illustrator version 8 format. The cut file can only be recognized by the software as an Illustrator version 8 format in CMYK with CMYK lines that are 100% black and a CMYK smart mark which is 100% black. Here we can see the files that we have saved. If we open up the Color Cut application, we can click File Open, we can select our files. And here is our cut line.